Previously, on playing Bill Nye's Stop the Rock. When water heats up, it expands. Just like a stretchy rubber band. That's convection. I'm convection. Over. If you'd like to find out more about convection and Connie, check out the Skylab. The access code is Nimbus. Keep up the good work. And now, part four of our Let's Play. Here we are in the Skylab. I'm being asked to pick my nose here. Who do you think I am, Bill? It's another written message. Yep, this is our version of NASA. It's where we put rockets together and get them ready for launch. Just click the button to pick a nose. Nose cone, that is. Each one has a device in it that will tell you about the atmosphere. When you find one you like, hit the Make It button, and you'll be ready to blast off. Okay, so Bill isn't encouraging kids to be disgusting here. He's encouraging them to engage in rocketry. That's a much better hobby. Okay, let's see what we've got here. A temperature sensor is the first one. That's a sweet-looking robotic arm there. You know, if we're capable of launching rockets here, why can't we use these to destroy the meteoroid? Now what? After you've assembled a rocket, aim it. Then hit the launch button to start the countdown and get ready for blast off. Pretty easy instructions. Cool. See, Bill's illustrating my point. These rockets would be good to use I'm against sorry, the I'm meteoroid. Just, um, <clears throat> my rockets are an excellent way to check out the atmosphere. We could See, use weather balloons to do that. Make the rockets go into space. But from space, the atmosphere looks like a thin blue line. See, compared to the Earth, the atmosphere is thin. Really thin. I mean, like covering a basketball with a piece of plastic wrap. <laughs> See, thin. So, check it out. Use these and find out about the atmosphere. Uh, I mean, uh, use the rockets, not the basketball or the plastic wrap. I don't know. You could learn something by throwing a plastic wrap basketball through the atmosphere. Okay, we need to aim the rocket. Don't know why, it's already vertical. Isn't launching at an angle what you do with missiles? T minus 10, 9, hey, do you know what the T stands for in T minus? Yes, I do. Now, if you would please launch the rocket. It stands for time, as in time minus. Isn't that cool? Uh oh, now I lost my place. Where was I? Uh, T minus 10, 9, what was it? 3, Two, one, OG. Oh, now you've done it. Oh, never mind. Looks like the rocket launched normally in a parabolic arc. Isn't the parachute supposed to deploy from the tip of the nose cone, not the side of it? When something's hot, its molecules are moving fast. Down near the surface of the Earth, air molecules move faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> Whoa! pretty warm down here, and the atmosphere acts like a giant blanket keeping in heat from the sun. Higher in the atmosphere, though, the molecules move more slowly and the air gets colder. Things cool off. Way up here, in the thermosphere, where the sun first hits the atmosphere, things start heating up again. Air molecules up here can get hotter than 600 degrees Celsius, but there's so few of them to run into, you'd still feel cold. I believe they're missing the exosphere here, but I guess that's because it's higher than the thermosphere and the rockets can't reach it. What's with this game and lunch? Does everybody have to forego their lunch break because of the oncoming meteoroid? Actually, that makes sense. Maybe they do. The poor, hungry fools. Right, back to the rocket assembly area. So now we're going to learn how wet the sky is. So in the lowest part of the atmosphere, there's the most moisture. And then as you go higher up, the moisture decreases. That makes sense. Let's launch another one. Looks like our gas sensor is next. Ah, 
smell that fresh gas. First you're encouraging kids to pick their noses, and now you're encouraging them to huff gasoline, Bill. You're poisoning the youths of America. Oh, and he's also reporting that the atmosphere is made of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% other gases, along with ozone and other stuff. That's also important. Now the biosensor's next, and it's going to help us determine if there's any life up there. That may actually help us answer this riddle. Okay, we've launched it. Now let's see what data it returns. There's lots of life in the atmosphere. Insects, birds, spiders, bats, flying fish, even squirrels. What? Is Rocky from Rocky and Bullwinkle flying around up there? That's the only squirrel I can think that'd be sailing through the atmosphere. There are a couple other things here that are pretty dubious, but let's see what they say when we report this as a clue. Hmm, maybe. But never eats and doesn't die? Keep working on it. I think you've got a nose for this kind of problem. Ha! Gee, thanks, Bill. Just a couple more rockets to launch. This one's the pressure sensor. How much does the sky weigh? Didn't Bill answer this for us already? There's five million billion kilograms. I said five million billion kilograms of air. Yeah, who could forget that? But let's see what it reports to us anyway. Finally, we get another video. The atmosphere is like an ocean of air. Have you got it now that the atmosphere is like an ocean of air? Because Bill said it four times now. 900 kilograms of air pressing down on each and every one of us right now. We can measure the pressure from all that air in atmospheres. On the ground, we say there's one atmosphere of air pressure. Now, up in the stratosphere, at 25 kilometers, there's less air pushing down, so the air pressure decreases. Up here, there's about one one-hundredth as much pressure as there is on the ground. <coughs> and way up in the thermosphere, there's hardly any air pressure at all. He really hasn't said anything about the mesosphere. Isn't that kind of an important layer of the atmosphere, too? 99.99% of the atmosphere is below the thermosphere. We've got one more rocket to launch, and it's a mystery. Nose Cone X, gift to Bill from the People's Republic of China. I've got a bad feeling about this one. Then again, diplomatic relationships between the US and China were better when this game was made, so maybe I shouldn't be worried. Hey, the rocket broke apart. Oh, because it's a firework. I see. Now, when that riddle said something that blows up in the sky, this is what I think of. But fireworks aren't living, so I guess that makes this kind of a red herring. Oh, and Chinese fireworks paved the way for modern-day rocket science. So we owe it to them for now being able to explore space. But enough with the rocket launching. Let's go up a floor. Looks like this is the flight control center or something. And there's that blimp we saw at the very beginning. Time now to exercise my air traffic control skills, of which I have none. Huh? Hey, good job! You've made your way to the Sky Nye Control Tower and Weather Station. From here, you can call Connie Vection on board the Sky Nye blimp, you can check the radar map, you can check the current weather, and you can get the official weather service forecast on the weather radio. Sure beats having to watch some guy in a bad suit push magnetic clouds around on a map on TV, doesn't it? Well, no. I, I don't think so. Who was that there with you, Bill? Cool. I guess I'll never know. Anyway, weather comes from the atmosphere, which is like a giant sea of air and moisture. And since we live in the atmosphere, we experience the weather, which is cool. 
Huge masses of air are always sloshing around, carrying heat and moisture everywhere. The atmosphere's motion makes wind, clouds, rain, snow, and thunderstorms. Yeah, that's weather for you. Anyway, let's contact Connie and the blimp. That's some interesting data you've collected from the biosensors, but I don't see anything out here that matches. Isn't there something you can do to investigate this, Connie? Hmm. I've got some equipment on board here that might help. At what altitude do you want me to fly? Oh, now you figure it out. Okay, we can fly as high as 20,000 meters. I think this is meters. The game is fond of using the metric system. And as low as 1,000 meters. Let's stay right in between those two extremes. Okay, I'll let you know when I get there. Vection out. She's still trying to find her place in the sky, so we can't talk to her. Let's fiddle around with some other equipment here. Huh? You know when TV weather people show radar maps of where the clouds or rain or storms are? Well, clouds and rain show up on the screen like this. That's because when radar signals are beamed out, they bounce back off water droplets in the air and show up as blobs on the radar map. These blobs are where the action is, where there are clouds, wind, rain, and lightning. Check it out! Now you have an idea of what makes radar maps look the way they do. You're learning so much in this video. Scattered clouds expected this afternoon as a cold mass of Arctic air blows in closer to the city. Our NILABS meteorologist. Huh? A weather map helps us understand what's causing the weather all around us. Now these lines on the map are what we call fronts. A front is the border between two huge masses of air. Now here, That's not how Urban Dictionary defines a front. With lots of moisture. And here, there's colder, high-pressure air that's dry. Now where those fronts meet, the warm air cools down and gives off its heat energy. Now that's what fuels thunderstorms, tornadoes, and even hurricanes. So as an old weather person once said, know your front and watch your back. That sounds like something a meteorologist from the hood would say. This is actually a pretty nice part of the lab. With a few renovations, it could be a nice studio apartment, you know? At least I think it would be. Anyway, let's go down to the lowest level here while we wait for Connie to get back to us. Mission 0062. Hey, I think this is Mariner 2, the first successful mission to another planet. Venus, not Saturn, like they're showing in the background here. I actually talked about this in one of my other videos. If you guys are interested, I'll put the link up here. Oh, there's another door over here. Access must be approved by Bill Nye. All right, now there's another secret we have to find. There's a rocket building area here. Oh, I didn't notice the biplane on the back wall there. Attention! Vection here. Get up to the Sky Nine controller ASASP. I've got something interesting. It looks like a... Oh, sounds like Connie's made her way to where she needs to be. Back to the top floor. Come on, we already did this part. There we go. Vection here. I just arrived at the altitude you ordered. I don't see much action here, but I do have some instruments with me on the blimp. Would you like me to use one of them? All right, Connie, if you want some action, we'll start you off with the sky back. Roger, Nylabs. Sky vac vacuum has been deployed. That's the best you can do. You'd think if they were able to afford a full rocket lab, they could do something better than a vacuum hose they throw out of the window on a blimp. Standing by. And now, the storm quarter. Uh-oh. Uh Good thing I got another one. Okay, that didn't work. How about the dry ice? Mm, well, that might be helping the grass. I don't think that answers any riddles. Or helps their game. Have people actually used dry ice on their grass? I know it contains carbon dioxide, but I feel like it's not the most practical stimulant for grass growth. Now let's throw some dirty socks outside All of the blade. Alright, let's see if you got the right stuff. Stand by to launch! Standing by! Standing by! Standing by! Now Connie's lost her mind. Lunch. <laughs> now you've done it. The whole place is sucked in. 
So you brought dirty socks on board and threw them out of your blimp for the purpose of making a bad pun? Yep, you're insane. Let's leave Connie up there and go exploring on the third floor, which we haven't done yet. It's a big paper dragon here. Planning on entering some kind of kite festival, Bill? Let's see what else is up here. I Speak of the devil, how'd you get up here so quickly with that watering can and those grapes in your hands? Plants aren't like you or me. I mean, just look at yourself. Do you look like a plant? Well, maybe if I wore a green shirt and brown pants. Between plants and us is inside. Plants make their own food inside themselves. They don't need to shop or cook or do the dishes. No, they just take light from the sun, water, and carbon dioxide from the air, which we exhale when we breathe. <sighs> then, presto, they make sugar, their own food. <laughs> Pretty good trick, huh? Making your own sugary food. Hey, like humans tree, can make like their own sugary like food, tree, and we can do it without sunlight. Sugar. <clears throat> anyway, the best part is, what they make, we can eat. Mm. Oh, that's sweet. You want one? In my book, no grape should crunch that much. Now, why would he be talking to us about plants? Unless... Unlike you, with food we do not deal, but we are able to make a light meal. What is a light meal? That's why Bill was directing us to the answer to one of our riddles. Time to contact that evil machine in the sky with an answer. Beyond belief. That's barking up the right vegetation. Continued application may buy your salvation. Awesome news. You've been upgraded. Six more wins and doom is evaded. That's that riddle behind us. Now let's go solve some more. After I get done admiring the kites they have here. Hey, that stuff you had Connie vacuum out of the sky is in the micro lab. When you get the chance, put it under the microscope and see if you can figure out what she brought back. We gotta know! Okay, that'll probably be an answer to another riddle right there. See how nicely things are progressing? No, I didn't explore this part of the lab yet. I'm seeing some astronomy tools here. Portrait of the Eagle Nebula on the wall over there. And, uh, looks like a movie theater seat right there. No, I don't want to go downstairs. I want to see what this is here. Well, looks like they expected us to click on this. Let's see what we got. Huh? Hey, you found one of my favorite parts of the lab. The big globe of science! Was text meant to show up on the screen right there? Because I heard sound effects, but I didn't see anything. All you gotta do is flip the switch. Flip the switch! Okay, don't burst your bow tie, Bill. Thousands of years of science? For us to even look at this took thousands of years of work. I mean, first we had to build boats, and then sail around the Earth, and then we had to invent this little thing called flight, then build airplanes, then rockets and computers, and then go into space and put up satellites, map the entire globe, photograph it, study it all, and finally see how everything all fits together. It's just amazing. <sighs> When you activate this puppy, you're activating the history of our Earth. A planet. Whoa. That was quite the overblown oratory there, Bill. Now well, let's see what's cool Earth. about this thing. Earth. Third planet from the sun. The blue planet. Uranus and Neptune are also blue, you know. Sweet home. <laughs> Only planet we know of with liquid water. Moons like Europa and Enceladus also have it under their surfaces. Crying out loud. So many different sciences from the atmosphere to deep in the ocean. To millions of different life forms. To forests. To the crust. Always growing and changing under our feet. To the water side. To astronomy and space science. There is one branch of science you forgot to mention. Oh, oh, sorry. The, the Earth is just so cool. Right, now that Bill's given us an extensive spiel on how amazing the Earth is, let's turn on our big globe of science.
that's it. So, the big globe of science is basically a holographic projection of Earth spinning while weird music plays. I'm a bit underwhelmed now, Bill. You kind of overhyped this and built it up beyond my expectations. If this were an IMAX presentation or something like that, I'd be demanding my money back. I... Okay, now I know why it's one of Bill's favorite parts of the lab. It fuels his immense ego. Right, let's go down to the micro lab and see what Connie brought back. Oh, hey! Here's that Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton we made earlier. Assembled by Canada, which is what I named myself at the beginning of the game. Nice view of the bay here. Don't know why it's saying scattered storms up there. Looks perfectly nice outside. Always wear safety goggles. Nobody ever gave me a pair when I started. NyLabs doesn't really care about my safety, I guess. Okay, here's the micro lab. Oh, first I need to use the bathroom. I've been holding on for quite a while. Just a minute! Bathroom is off limits for the next millennium and a half. Let's go into the micro lab. Hey there! I just brought back some samples I took while up in the sky and I. I haven't had time to identify them yet, and I've got work to do. You mean you have more flying around in the blimp to do? I might start by looking through the drawers to see if anything matches the samples I brought back. Bye bye. Okay, um. I think the most likely stuff she brought back is plant stuff. I'll try that drawer first. If I can't find anything in there, I'll look at bugs and gnarly critters next. Uh, nope. 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 Oh! Looks like fungus spores are what she brought back here. Okay, it says fungus spores can float through the air in a resting state until they reach a place where they can grow again. So it sounds like the answer to that riddle about what never eats and doesn't die. That implies spores have some kind of immortality, which I don't think they do, so that makes this riddle a bit questionable in wording. I am blown away! You are more than a match for my riddle! Well, Max accepts it, so now we have two riddles solved in this video. Two riddles down, five to go. You've shifted the odds, a surprise I admire, though you're not exactly out of the fire. Wait. Oh, Swell's got a message for us. Aye, aye, I be arrived at ye destination, matey. Use the ship to pirate radio in the comm center. I be awaiting your orders. It's not a pirate radio, but okay, we'll go to the Ocean Comm Center next. Unfortunately, I'm now trapped in a time warp and can't move. Why do you do this to me? Can I... Well, not this again. The Optimistic News Network is back again. Good evening, and welcome to Bad News Tonight. I'm Chet Brinko. With just four days to go before meteoroid impending Dumay crashes into the planet, let's pause and reflect for a moment. Technically, you were doing that already. See, because the light's now, reflecting off of him and we're seeing it, so labs has made. never mind. Things are looking better. Nylabs has solved two riddles with five to go. Okay, tomorrow's weather is expected to be hot and sunny with some fog and an occasional thunderstorm. That's it for Bad News Tonight. I'm Chet Brinkow. Well, on to day two.